Hey guys, another video for our how to do stuff in Japan playlist. Bit of a boring topic this one. The pension system in Japan has been coming up a bit recently. People have been asking about it because there's been a few things happening that we'll get to in a minute and a few changes that are happening. And it does affect you if you come to Japan because the Japan law says that everybody between the ages of 20 and 59 are obliged to pay into the pension system. So in, in a lot of countries, the, the pension retirement insurance or pension system and the healthcare system or health insurance or the public health insurance, whatever you want to call it, uh, in a lot of countries is tied in with the tax system, if you're lucky. If, you, if you're lucky enough to live in a country that does that, you don't have to think about it because it's all included in your tax system and it just when you get your tax deducted, that includes all those things. However, in Japan, in the land of the rising, in the land of the rising bureaucracy, where everything has to be as complicated as possible, the pension system and the healthcare system are separate from the tax system. So everything has to be done separately. So the way it's sort of treated here is that the health in the health is the health insurance system, and the pension service they call it. The pension service administers the pension system, but it's sort of treated like retirement insurance is sort of the way it's treated and calculated and so on. So today we're just talking about the retirement thing. We talked about the health insurance another time and the retirement insurance, so the retirement system, a pension system. So there is a lot to it. We're not going to be able to cover every, absolutely every contingency and to address every circumstance because there are a lot of variables, as you'll see shortly. But we'll just sort of cover it in big rough strokes just to give you a bit of an idea. So the law says everybody between 20 and 59 has to be enrolled in the pension system. And then if, if you are excluded from paying into the pension system, so for example, if you've come to Japan on a student visa or there's a few other except exemptions like that, then you can apply for an exemption and you won't have to pay into the pension system. But you'll have to apply for an exemption. So they start with the assumption that everybody between the ages of 20 and 59 has to pay into it. And then they work backwards from there. And then you can get partial exemptions if you don't earn much money or there's a whole heap of things. But of course, as always in Japan, it involves a lot of faffing and a lot of paperwork. So um, it's just the way it is. And if you do the exemption thing, you've got to do it every year, apparently. So there's a lot of faffing there as well. If you come to Japan and work for a company, there's a good chance they're going to take care of all that for you. That they'll take care of your pension, your pension and your health care as well, most likely, um, depending on, on the circumstances of your employment. So if you're lucky, that'll be the case, and you'll never have to think about it. They'll just, they'll just pay into your system for you, and and you won't even have to think about it. However, if they don't, and you have to take care of it yourself, then you have to go and enroll yourself in the pension service. And, and this is a strange thing. In a, lot of, in a lot of cities in Japan, all these things are administered at the city hall. And it's quite common in, in the city hall to have one counter where you go to get your foreigner card, your foreigner registration card that we've talked about before. And quite often, the next counter over will be the pension counter or the or the health insurance counter and and usually they're all the health the health insurance and the pension and everything are usually in the same place which means if they've got these systems working together when you when you applied for your foreigner card you'd have all those pieces of paper together the health insurance and the and the pension as well but that of course it's Japan so they don't do that so so if, if, the, if the company you're working for is not going to do it for you, you've got to go and enroll yourself. And then the cost varies. Again, it's always complicated, right? It always has to be complicated here. So, so the, about the minimum you're going to pay is about $160 a month. That's about the minimum that you'll be paying. And then it, it, could, it goes upwards and it could be as much as... It seems to it seems to vary between about ten and about seventeen percent of your income. So it, it's it's really complex system. We've been looking into this for quite a while. What actually happened was a friend of ours, an American friend of ours, um, got a letter 
and apparently lots of people got letters. That's what triggered some of these questions we've been getting, is lots of people got letters written in multiple languages that said, you know, if you're between 20 and 59 and you're in Japan, you should be registered um, on the, the pension system. And everybody who wasn't, and apparently, as we've researched this, we found up to 50% of, Japan, of, Jap of people in Japan that should be registered are not. Now, not sure if that's accurate, but, but the, you know, everything we've read is from, you know, 30% to 50% of people in Japan that should be registered on the pension system aren't. And of course, Japan, the government's really worried about that because they've got an aging population and, you know, they need people to be paying into this pension system because they're getting more and more people, retired people, that they've got to support, right? So because of the way this system's geared, they really need people to be paying into it. So, and then combine that with the fact that you might, some of you might remember we talked about a while ago, they brought in a new thing called My Number. My Number is what some people in some countries would call social security number. Uh, in other countries, they might call them a tax file number or something like that. But they basically assigned a number to everybody in the country. And that was the very clever. Since this last couple of weeks, we've been wondering if that was motivated by this pension thing because obviously it makes it too easy now because <coughs> every employer has now entered into their system the my number for all their employees. And the obviously the pension service has also had um, my number applied to everybody who's registered in the pension service. So now it's a really simple thing, isn't it, to get the computer to tell them which people are earning or which people are uh, yeah, earning money who aren't registered um, for the pension. So it's too easy. So it makes you wonder which came first there, you know, whether whether the pension service took advantage of the my number or if, if that was why they brought the my number thing in. But anyway, it's in. So what's happened is everybody who wasn't registered with the pension service has received a letter to say that they should be. That was the first thing they got. And then our American friend recently, about a week ago, he got a letter, a really strict letter, um, that said, because the first letter was, was really quite, quite light. It just said, please be aware that everybody who you know, who's in Japan, who, who's between 20 and 59, should be registered in the pension system. It was very light. If you're not registered, please go and register. And then this guy got one addressed specifically to him and said, it said, you must contact us and make a time for an interview to come and see us to talk about your registering for your pension. And if you don't, um, if you don't, we will freeze your bank accounts, basically. It was worded a little bit more gently, but not much. It was pretty, pretty aggressive. It was pretty aggressive considering all things considered. When you consider that, you know, so many people aren't registered for the pension and that, um, you know, and that the pension's his thing. He's not a criminal, you know what I mean? Um, but having said that, then he went in for the interview, of course, because he didn't want to have his bank accounts frozen. And they told him that he had to pay because, see, the minimum is $160 a month is the minimum premium that anyone pays. And then it's up to whatever, that's before that percentage of your income. So they calculated on that. They said to him he had to pay $4,000 by the next day is what they told him. So obviously they'd already looked at his bank account. They already knew that he had the cash to do it. And they said, you have to pay $4,000 by tomorrow um, Yon, Yon, Ju, um, Yon Juman by tomorrow or um, or your uh, permanent residence status could be taken away which again was fairly aggressive you know that the, they got him into the office by threatening to freeze his bank accounts and then they got him to register uh, they got him to, to pay the $4,000 by threatening to take away his permanent residency, which is pretty aggressive. I mean, the guy's been here for 20 years. He's a good guy. You know, he's, he's been paying his taxes and being a good guy and doing all the right things. And, you know, fairly aggressive to threaten him to take away his permanent residency, you know. But they did. They did. That's what they threatened him with. And so he paid the 4000 the next day. So the reason that some people aren't registered is because the maths isn't particularly good 
for most people. If you look at if you look at what what you pay in and then what you get back, usually most people. And again, it it totally depends on your income and on your assets and on what country you come from. For foreigners, for non-Japanese people, um, there's a lot of the different countries have relationships with the Japanese government where they have. Uh, reciprocal agreements. So, if a Japanese person is living in Australia, for example, they can collect the Australian pension, and it's subsidised by the Japanese government, and it's calculated together. And, and if an Australian person is living in Japan, it, it's quite it's complex. And then it's complex for all the different countries that have agreements with Japan. And then some countries don't have agreements with Japan, of course. So it depends on on what country you're from. Um, but but usually it comes out that the average pension is usually about $8,000 a year. So it's not real big. Um, apparently they've written something or they've made some assurance to the Japanese people that it will never be less than half the minimum wage. And the minimum wage in Japan is pretty low. So, you know, about eight grand a year um, is what the pension's paying at the moment, at the most. And, and it depends on how much you've paid in. If you haven't paid in for more than 10 years, then it, they reduce it. And if you haven't paid in for more than three years, they reduce it. And, and if you've got assets, they reduce it. And so the most, most that you're likely to get back is about $8,000 a year. So because of that, a lot of people do the, do the calculations and come to the conclusion that it's not worth paying into it for, for them. They, they look at how much they'll pay in over their, over their time till they reach 65, they work out how much they'll pay in and then they, and they decide it's not worth it, that they're better off just keeping that money and investing it somewhere and getting some, some interest rate for it. So that's why a lot of people don't register. Um, there's other people that don't register because they're not, they struggle. You know, there's a lot of people can't afford the $160 a month, of course. And, and the right course of action there is that what you're supposed to do if you can't afford it, you're supposed to register anyway and then go and apply for an exemption. And they'll either, if, if you're earning not, not much at all, they might give you some partial exemption. And if you're earning, or, or they might give you a full exemption, depends on what you're earning. But there's a couple of things with this too. If you happen to be married, <coughs> if you happen to be married and, and one of the people in the marriage isn't earning any money, isn't working, then their partner has to pay it. So, if, you know, if you're married to someone and they're not working, or you are working, then you have to pay their their pension. You're obliged to pay their pension because they look at you and go, well, you, you know, she can't pay it, you can, or he can't pay it, but, but she can, so pay up, you know. So, so it's really complicated, but if you look at it, just in round, in round sort of figures, that that's about it. You'd be paying in about $160 a month, and then when you retire, you'd be getting back about $8,000 a year, and that's that's like the standard. And then it varies. It varies. If you're here earning big money, then you'll probably be paying a lot more than that. Um, Ten. It seems to be. It's really complicated. If you if you look at any of the, we'll we'll put a link underneath this video to we, we put them on the English friendly directory, the pages that are in English. Um, but it is really complex, and then there's all those variables about what country you come from, what assets you've got, how much you earn. It, it makes it quite complicated to, to work out whether it is a good thing for you or not. Um, but obviously, with the law saying, the law says you, you have to register, so, you know, it is a tricky one. And then, of course, the people who are coming here and are only going to be here for a year, and then they're going back to their country, or well, they're going to be here for five years. I mean, most most people most people who aren't Japanese who come to Japan and work usually don't stay here forever. Most of the people who come here to work go home eventually. They'll go home after six months or a year or five years or ten years. But most people do go home. There's not many that actually stay to retirement age, you know. So um, those people, of course, worry about trying to get it back. And again, <coughs> it seems to vary on a whole heap of variables, but it does seem that you could get up to three years of it back if, you, if you're here for three years or five, say you're here for five years and then you go back to your country that you can apply to get three years of what you've paid in returned to you so you might you know get six thousand dollars back and then take that back with you 
So, as you can see, I mean, this we've spent a lot of time researching this, and as you can see, in the end, it's all still fairly vague because there's so many variables in, involved in it. But, but that's we've sort of given you sort of like the the outline of what it's about anyway. So, the bottom line is that if you if you come here work for a company that's going to pay it for you, you're lucky because that'll mean you won't have to think about any of this. It'll just be a number written on your pay pay form that you get every month. It'll just say how much they took out for health insurance and you just go, oh, yeah, okay. They're going to have to do it because that's the law. Um, so if they're paying it for you, you're lucky. If you're supposed to do it yourself, well, you know, keep in mind, things like this, they're ruthless. You know, they were really ruthless with that guy with the threats. And it's sort of not surprising because that's what they do in Japan. If you don't, If you don't do what you're supposed to do, and we've talked about this before, if you don't fulfill your social obligations or your legal obligations like you're supposed to here, they can be fairly ruthless about it. So not really surprising really. So you know you have to be aware of that that if, if you if you were a bit slack and it's the same, the health insurance is the same. There are a lot of people that come to Japan and work here and never register for the, the pension and never register for the health insurance. And you can sort of understand their thinking is that they're taking the risk themselves. If they get sick and they don't have health insurance, they have to, they'll pay for it themselves. And you know, that they've got their own pension ideas already sorted out maybe in their own country or something like that. And, and so they, they think it's their choice not to do it. But unfortunately, that's not the way the Japanese system works. The, the law in Japan says you must register for the health insurance and you must register for the pension. So, you know, we just have to keep that in mind. So, so anyway, it's changing. The other thing is too, it's really hard if you are intending to stay in Japan forever, it's really hard to work out with this because some people actually pay in extra, apparently. A bit hard to imagine that. <laughs> but there is talk that some people actually pay extra into their pension in, uh, every month so that they get more back when they retire. <coughs> um, which is interesting, but with with a lot of these things, it's a bit, it's very uncertain because the the rules are always changing, and and you know how much they pay is always changing, and, and the premiums are always changing, and and you'd have to assume with Japan's aging population that this is going to not get better for 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 the people here. It's it's likely to get tougher. You know, it's likely that the premiums are going to increase and the amount that we'll get back will decrease. Apparently the government promised everybody that the, the, the pension would never drop below um, 50% of minimum wage. But, you know, minimum wage in Japan is pretty low anyway. So 50% of minimum wage would be about what it is at the moment. You know, 8000 a year for the pension. Minimum wage would be about 16000 a year. $300 a week is about right, you know, because minimum wage would be about eight or nine dollars an hour probably so half that eight thousand dollars a year so it's not a lot it's not a lot and it's likely to change so th this is the tricky thing you know the, the question that we had from an american friend he was talking about you know don't know what to do don't know what to do and we're talking about it and i mean he's got no choice now he's paid his four thousand dollars and he's going to be paying his 160 dollars a month but we're, we're talking about whether it's a worthwhile thing or not and, and we don't know, I mean, you can work out all the maths now based on the numbers that we have now and the percentages and figures that we have now and work out whether it's a good thing or not for you right now. But it, it doesn't mean that's gonna be the same situation 20 years from now because they, they're changing it constantly as they are with a lot of other countries as well. I mean, we looked at, looked at, at, at America, looked at his home country <coughs> and, that, and that changes as well. So it's hard to compare and know 20 years from now, which is going to be the right decision, whether, whether you know, that pension's a good system for you or whether paying an extra was a good system or, or whatever. So, anyway, <laughs> it's a messy, boring topic, isn't it? It really is. But we had to address it because people keep asking about it and it is a little bit overwhelming. But um, it, it's not... For most people, it's not a huge amount of money. You know, if, you, if you've got a full-time job here and, and you're paying $160 a month into that system and you're gonna be here for a couple of years, then you're gonna go, go home, you can sort of look at it as, as just putting it in the bank. 
there's $160 a month that you, you're saving, really. If, you, if you're only here for a couple of years and then you're going to go home, you know, chances are at the end you're going to apply to have it reimbursed and you'll get it reimbursed to you and then you can, you'll go home with a little bit of cash. So, you know, they're not, eventually you'll get it back. That's probably the way to look at it. Most of it. I mean, if you're here for 10 years, um, you know, then you just got to look at it that you're sort of losing it out. The other, the other thing we're looking at too is the cost of living in Japan at the moment is, is at the moment is pretty surprisingly low. You know, it is pretty cheap living here it, it, in, in mostly compared to a lot of other countries, it is pretty cheap living here too. So if you look at it from that point of view, and things like the healthcare system too, you know, if you do pay into the health insurance and have reason to claim, you know, recently our, our unskilled labourer spent five weeks in a Japanese hospital, and that was incredibly good value. When you look at what that would have cost, you know, in a lot of other countries, and, and the healthcare system here pretty much picked up the tab for all of it, pretty much. Pretty much, and, and and if you look at it like that in the big picture, usually living here, if you add your taxes up and your healthcare and your your pension and the other things that you pay out, and and then look at your income and your cost of living here, it, it does tend to compare pretty well with a lot of other countries. It sure sure compares really well to Australia at the moment. Australia's much more expensive, and you know. And so, I mean, you do the maths, don't you? You do the maths and you weigh it up. I mean, we're, we're sort of lucky. People that come from other countries are pretty lucky in a way because we have a, we have the choice, don't we? If you if you look at all these things and add them up and come to the conclusion at the end that it sucks, well, you can always go back to your own country if you think it's a better deal, can't you? We've always got that second option, haven't we? Where we can say, oh no, don't like this system at all. I'm going home. You can always do that. But for those of us who stay here, generally we, we add up the pros and cons of all these things and the, the pain in the neck bureaucracy and all the other stuff that we, that we have to go through here and, and we come to the conclusion that it's well worth it. So, <clears throat> as the Japanese people say, shogunai, a lot of this stuff is shogunai. It is what it is, it can't be helped. <laughs> anyway, that was probably the most boring video of the year. Sorry about that. More videos coming soon.